Another type of problem we can do with two-dimensional forces is an inclined plane problem. So uh, we take an inclined plane and we have a block of mass m. Let's say the inclined plane has an angle of theta. So we're going to start, like we start all of our problems, by drawing a free body diagram. So there's the weight, which acts straight down. The normal force, which acts perpendicular to the surface. So that's something that we haven't seen yet. Um, the normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the surface, even if that surface is at an angle. So if the surface is, an, is at an angle, the normal force is also going to be at an angle. Okay. So this block is going to slide down the ramp with acceleration A. And so if you notice, the acceleration isn't in the purely x or purely y. It's also at an angle. And it's going to be parallel to the plane of the incline. So the normal force is perpendicular. The acceleration is going to be parallel. Um, we're going to solve this by creating a new coordinate system. It's not as scary as it sounds. Um, we're pretty much just going to get everything parallel and perpendicular to the acceleration or to uh, the surface of the incline. Okay, so it sounds complicated, but I'm just going to redraw it over here. There's the y and there's the x. So my weight is going to be have to have to be broken down since that's at an angle with respect to my new yellow and purple coordinate system. So how do I know which angle is theta? So I can draw a triangle like this. I know that one's similar. I know that the angle on the other side of my yellow line is also 90 degrees. So the number of angles for a straight line is 180. Uh, so in my similar triangle, my theta angle is on the bottom left. The upper angle is 90 minus theta, because there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So if I have 90 minus theta and a 90, in order to get to 180, that angle in the middle has to be theta. So breaking down my weight into components, my yellow one is cosine, and my purple one is sine. Okay, now let's redraw the free body diagram with only my parallel and perpendicular components. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Uh, this inclined plane happens to be frictionless. So, we are ready to do the sum of our forces. So let's start with y. I have the normal force acting up minus the weight acting down. So if we tilt our head and we look at this, we know that the block's not going to hop up off the inclined plane, nor is it going to fall through the inclined plane. So the acceleration in the y is zero, just like um, a normal block on a surface. So we get that the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Notice that it's not the entire weight. It's just a component of the weight. Okay, so now we can go and do our x. So the sum of our forces in our x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. So the only force acting is mg sine theta going down the ramp, and that's going to be equal to the mass of the block times its acceleration. So solving for acceleration, we find that the m's cancel out. This means that this acceleration is mass independent. So the rate at which it slides down the ramp is unaffected by its mass, kind of like how, how fast an object falls is unaffected by its weight. So let's do another example. We have another inclined plane. This time its angle is 30. We're going to have a mass tied to another mass. This is going to be a lot like the lab we're going to do here in a couple of days. Let's say that there is friction and its coefficient is 0.5. Okay, so first things first, we've got to draw our free body diagram. So the weight acts down, the normal force acts perpendicular to the surface, friction's going to slow it down, and tension's going to pull that block up the ramp. For the other block, the weight acts down and the tension's going to act up. 
And so this whole thing is going to slide up the ramp and over. OK, so now we have to make our new axis. So that's super tiny, but it ends up being the exact same as the other one, where my vertical component is equal to mg cosine theta and my horizontal is mg sine theta pointing down the ramp. Let me redraw it a little nicer. We're going to flatten it out uh, just like we did before. So reorienting ourselves, we're going to point our normal force up, our mg cosine theta down. And then to the left, we have both friction and mg sine theta. We're going to connect it to our other block, like that. And in this case, the 2mg, the weight of that 2m block, is going to point to the right. And then, yes, there are tensions in the middle, but they're about to go away. So we have enough information to find friction now. Um, so friction is equal to mu times the normal force. So uh, our normal force is simply mg cosine theta, same as it was before. So our frictional force is half of mg cosine theta. Good. Now I think we are ready to make super block. So with super block, we have mg sine theta and the friction pointing to the left, and the weight of the 2m block pointing to the right. Uh, the normal force and the weight, uh, part of the weight component is going to cancel out since it's not accelerating upward off the ramp. And we can do some of the forces is equal to ma. So positive 2mg minus mg sine theta minus the frictional force is equal to the total mass, 3m times a. So all the m's drop out again. Once again, it's that mass independence. So simplifying a little bit. And we'll keep going. Uh, here I plugged in my trig numbers. So I get 1.07g is equal to 3a. Solving for a, I get a is equal to 0.36g, so about a third gravity, or 3.6 meters per second squared. 